It's been said gentlemen prefer blondes. But what do the ladies prefer? Well, that choice is a matter of life and death for one type of bird. Mark Horseman reports on the extraordinary sex life of the Gaulian finch, where choosing the wrong mate can mean curtains for the kids. In the tropical grasslands across the top of Australia, the Gaulian finch is so endangered, there are no more than 3,000 left in the wild. But it's also a very rare bird in another way. Most species come, typically come in one form, where all the individuals of the species look the same. The Gordian finch comes in three different sorts, yellowheads, redheads and blackheads. Usually, natural selection produces a species in just one form. So why does the Gouldian finch have three? To answer this question, Dr. Sarah Pryke studies them in these aviaries in the Hunter Valley. I'm very interested in, in the behaviours that the birds do, and um, especially to do with colour and genetics, so why certain birds use certain colours. Gouldian finches are, are pretty unique because they basically wear their genes on their head, if you like. Sarah was intrigued by a key behavioural trait. Fiery redheads rule the roost. Gouldian finches always attack from above. Dominant bird always goes to the top. In this case, it's generally redheads. They tend to be a lot more dominant than the black birds. It's a classic pecking order. It is completely the pecking order. While bird breeders have known about the dominance of redheads for some time, Sarah has found there's more to head cover than meets the eye. It's no surprise. The Gouldian finch is a popular aviary bird because it's just so colourful. But from the bird's point of view, the male's rainbow colours do little for the female unless he's a match up top. First of all, she looks for somebody who has got the same head colour as herself. Within males of the same head colour, she will also judge males on the sort of intensity of the ultraviolet blue colour band that goes around the, the head mask. But the overriding effect is definitely that the, the head colour. And with good reason. Different head colours are genetically incompatible and can't breed successfully. If this female mates with a red-headed male, her children will pay the price. Many of her chicks will die, and her daughters will do particularly badly. Only one in five will survive. But to compensate, the female has evolved an amazing defence. If forced to mate with a mismatch, she'll produce chicks that are nearly all male, which have a much higher survival rate. Finding that control of the sex ratio really suggests that females have a lot more control over something that a lot of us previously have thought is pretty random. To prove that the female, not the male, is controlling the sex of their offspring, Sarah gave hundreds of red-headed males a makeover. So there's quite an art to painting a building finch. And what you don't want to leave is any red roots. Does this die person? Not at all. It's completely non-toxic. And actually, when we're finished, we just simply take it off. It just washes off very easily. Uh, okay. If I was a female Gouldian finch, I, I wouldn't know the difference. This is where it gets really interesting. This female thinks she's looking at a black-headed male, but he's actually a redhead in disguise. This is what happens when a female mates with a male who she thinks is incompatible. She lays less eggs and she has more sons. Female Gouldians judge whether a male is a genetic match just by looking at his head colour. It's completely a visual cue. It's pretty amazing that we can just change the head colours and that completely changes what she does with her offspring. When their wild populations are small and fragmented, it can be difficult for female finches to find Mr. Rock. To help rebuild the Gouldian finch populations in the north, Simon and Sarah are trucking 200 designer nest boxes up to the Kimberley. One of the 
problems that the Gulgi and Finch face is, is that the landscape has been really altered recently due to fire. And what this has done is actually removed a lot of the old trees in which the Gulgi and Finch nests in. Hopefully by increasing the sizes of the populations, this will provide enough baits available to birds so that they don't have to keep breeding with an incompatible partner. And in just the couple of sites that we've been working in in the last year, with only putting up about 400 nest boxes, we actually managed to increase the breeding densities by 20%, which is really, really encouraging. Not only does their work support an endangered species, it opens a window into how species evolve in the first place. So we believe that that pattern of variation that we see in the grass finches across the top end of Australia is a result of climate change over the last million years or so. A drying climate pushed the ancestral finches into the northernmost tips of Australia. With their populations separated, different forms evolved in isolation. But as the climate became wetter and the savannah expanded southwards, these forms came back into contact with each other. It's a process which has probably repeated itself over and over again, and it's resulted in these distinct forms that we see in any bird book. The more we're learning about it, the more this is going to just teach us so much about not just speciation, what a species is, but also about how different genes control different behaviors.